have to write in a hooda believe anymore. Well, the other day I was at my bank. They got signs all over there. At this bank of a friend. Last month I was two payments behind. My friend took away my car. About a few of them? Well, last time I was there I met a lovely girl. Uh -huh. Oh, a lovely girl. Valerie Dubois. Valerie Dubois. Oh, lovely girl. Valerie Dubois. In fact, she told me to call her VD for sure. <laughs> I didn't. Valerie Dubois. <laughs> Wonderful. Although I got a refrigerator at home, it's, I can't figure. It's very deceiving. Ah. My refrigerator is always full. There's nothing to eat. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Classy and Trendy. And today I'm going to check out a video of Rodney Dangerfield. If you are a comedy fan, I'm sure you already know who Rodney Dangerfield is, or might have seen his comedy. For him, we can clearly say that he needs no introduction. I found this video of him on YouTube, and I found it to be very funny. And that's why I thought to share with you and to watch with you guys. This 10 minutes of video you can say is a complete introduction to Rodney Dangerfield lifetime of comedy and his style of comedy. So this has everything back to back jokes, back to back jingers, punches and his popular self deprecating type of comedy. And along with that Tony Carson is there. Rodney Dangerfield was a national treasure and you are gonna miss him more after watching this clip and after watching this video. So I can just watch and enjoy and I hope you also do. So let's start the video and uh, I will meet you again at the end of the video. So let's start with watching Rodney Dangerfield on Johnny Carson show. It's nice, we've got a grown-up crowd too, you know. Yeah, I did a show last week for a bunch of teenagers. And these kids carry on today, you can't tell boys from girls. I mean, the girls that wear slacks, fellas let their hair grow. I was talking to someone yesterday, look at that teenager, what's that a boy or a girl? He said, that's a boy, that's my son. I said, sure, you knew you're his father. He said, I'm not his father, I'm his mother. <laughs> I don't know, I tell you, life isn't easy. After a while, I don't know who to believe anymore. Well, the other day I was at my bank, they got signs all over there. At this bank of a friend, Last month, I was two payments behind. My friend took away my car. <laughs> I tell you what, me, nothing comes easy, nothing, you know? Well, last week, I saw my dentist. Not a beauty, my dentist. Now I said to him, can you put in a new tooth to match my other teeth? He put in a tooth with four cavities. <laughs> now, I tell you, last week was a rough week for me, you know, last week. I broke up my psychiatrist, too, last week. For the first time, I told him I got suicidal tendencies. He told me from now on I have to pay in advance. <laughs> well, the first time I saw a psychiatrist, I felt like two cents. I was a kid. I said to him, Doc, can you help me? All day long, he's thinking I'm ugly. He made me lay on a couch face down. <laughs> I tell you, when I was a kid, I got no respect. No respect at all, you know? The time I was lost on a beach, and a cop had me look for my parents. I said to the cop, I think we'll find them. He said, I don't know, kid, there's so many places I could hide. <laughs> and when I was a kid, my old man, he didn't help either, you know. The time I asked my old man if I can go ice skating on a lake, he told me to wait till it gets warmer. <laughs> I tell you, sometimes I can't take it no more. Well, today I got two kids and that's rough too, you know. You can't talk to kids today. My boy's birthday last week, had a little party, brought out the cake, the kids blew out all the candles. I said to him, I hope your wish comes true. He said, if it does, that's the last time you'll watch me blow out candles. <laughs> a smart kid I got, you know. Like the last time I took my kid to Coney Island, I asked him if he wanted to go in a crazy house. He told me to save my money, we'll be home soon. <laughs> Here we are out with a couple of blondes. Yeah. 
Hi, it's good to see you again. Uh, nice it's been a long time. time. I always get a kick out of coming out here. They treat you right over here. There's yeah. one place they treat you right. You know, I leave, leave the club. I close this week in a club in New York. I, but I'll be back next Monday. You just close September it? 9th. Lock it up completely? I lock the whole thing up for a week. Now I'll come back next Monday night, September 9th, and tell my jokes are going to danger fields. But it's always a kick to come out here. Yeah. Right? I love it out here, you know. I like to go to Vegas too, you know. Do you? I'm going to Vegas right for a couple of days. I always go over there. You meet so many wonderful, wonderful people in Vegas. Uh -huh. you no know, idea. Can you, can you tell us about a few of them? Well, last time I was there, I met a lovely girl. Uh -huh. Oh, a lovely girl, Valerie Dubois. Valerie Dubois. Oh, lovely girl, Valerie Dubois. In fact, she told me to call her VD for sure. He <laughs> did, <laughs> Valerie Dubois. <laughs> Wonderful people out in Vegas. Yeah, really uh -huh. nice, but oh, Vegas really swings. They got the gambling there, the big Wild. hotels and yeah. nightclubs. Oh, that's what big nightclubs they got there. Yeah. Simple, isn't really so different than the places I worked when I broke in. You know, tough places. You working in yeah. little joints, oh, right? Oh, I worked tough places. You know, places like Rosario's Rocket Room. You know. Rosario's oh, Rocket yeah. Room. Yeah. Tough, tough, tough. Dominic's Atomic Bar and Grill. Oh, that's another one. Sure. Oh, Dominic, he was tough. Ooh, yeah, he tough, though. tough on him. During the show, he used to yell at the axe all the time. Yeah. yeah, when that guy was singing, why was I born? He yelled out, not to sing, you know. Really, really, really. <laughs> That's a real heckler, oh, Dominic, boy, bad news, yeah. yeah. Tell you, show business, you gotta get the brakes. You gotta uh, get the brakes, Johnny. I wouldn't guess so, yeah. I never got the brakes, never. Really? As a kid, I never got the brakes either, never. This has been following you all your life, you mean? I was rough when I was a kid. Yeah. I was a kid the first time I had my picture taken. The pony threw me. <laughs> Another one I should have You gotta try them out of town, one. right? You can't, you can't bring them in. Take them on a road to you. Take them on a road. You gotta break them right. in. So you get the feeling you wasted your whole life. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's not easy. I got no respect the day I was born. Really? No respect. The doctor picked me up and smacked me. I found out the nurse. She got a few in too. You know? <laughs> We've got to take a break here, but we'll we're, break. So then we'll come right back and uh, find out how your health is, because I'm always interested. comes out so much, I feel like I'm doing a magic act up here. Well, after this message of interest. <laughs> if you just happen to tune in late tonight. My guests are Miss Doris Day, Carol Wayne, and we are just listening to the trials and tribulations of Mr. Rodney Dangerfield as, as a youngster. Sometimes I think you... You're putting me on, but you did come from a rather oh, a very, bad a background, very didn't you? I was a lonely kid, too, Johnny. Oh, yeah, yeah lonely. lonely huh? Even in the park, I had no friends. Really? I remember the seesaw. I had to keep running from one end to the other. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's lonely. That's sad. I grew up, I was lonely, too, and I grew yeah, up. Yeah. I couldn't get dates with girls. Girls didn't So with girls, they go for a guy with looks. Everything is looks, looks, you know? Yeah. But this thing's more important looks. It's underneath what counts, soul, depth. Right. That's what's important, not looks. Now, how many times take a walk in the street, you see a tall, handsome man walking arm in arm with a short, fat, ugly girl? I never saw that. Did you never saw that, that at all. Never saw that. <laughs> I thought I saw Probably that. had no soul or any depth there or anything. Yeah, but looks don't mean nothing. Man, I got a niece, an ugly girl. She got married. She's happy. She married an ugly guy. Right. And today they got two very ugly kids. The ugly kids, <laughs> yes. <laughs> in fact, they're all so ugly in a family album. They only keep the negatives. The <laughs> I'll tell you what's more important than looks is love. You gotta have love. Love is and important. And I got plenty of love in me, Johnny. That's plenty of love. I love thing. a lot of things. Love. I love sports, I love music, and right. one of my kids. <laughs> How many kids do you have? I got two kids. Got I two. love my yeah, kids. Yeah, you know, I, I know that. Kids, of course, but our boy gives me trouble lately. Yeah, really? He's at the age now he copies everything. He sees something, he copies, you know. This uh, kid imitates everything. Yeah. That's why we got rid of the dog. Yo, yeah, I. <laughs> no, they're. Very impressionable at that age. The peculiar feeling is your son standing there with one leg up. Yes, I know what you mean, of course. No Great offense. Touch. But how? Uh, no. We didn't go with the dog, I was just kidding around, yeah. that's all, you know. How's your, how's your health? Are you in good, are you in good health? health? Very good, very good. There's no love in the house, that hurts my no health. No love in the house. Sure. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, we weren't ready to go to health we yet. Ready to go to ah, I didn't know. I, I see. You know, okay. sure, there's no love in the house, you know. Ah. You know, my wife's the easiest person to get along with, you know that. Yeah. Oh, my wife, you're kidding me, I can tell you stories of my wife sometimes. Yeah. Or else we have a few drinks sometimes, I'll start talking. Really? When I drink, I talk, you know. I did. Uh, my wife's a cold person, Johnny. Cold. I'm sorry. Well, her side of the water, but it's frozen. <laughs> oh. Very cold place. Well, I never got love when I was a kid either. Yeah. My brother got the love. No, because he was much neater than I was. My room was messed up, but didn't care. My brother's room was in order. His towel was lined up neatly, combs, brushes, hair looks was on the right place. So what did it mean? What is he today? He's an attendant in the men's room. It didn't mean that. <laughs> I 
It's embarrassing having a brother who works in a men's room. People say, hey, Rodney, what can I watch your brother do? I don't know what to say. I tell me it's a business for himself, you know. Yeah, that's good. That's good. They say, yeah, what can kind of business? A big business? Well, I'll put it this way. If it closed up tomorrow, a lot of people would suffer. That's true. <laughs> that's true. But the whole thing is you want to be happy, do the work you like. That's what you're going to do, the work you like. Yeah. That's important. Do the work you like. And my friend, the doctor, Dr. Vinny Boombach, ah, yeah, he how told is he? me. <laughs> how is the doctor? The, the most doctor. important thing is never take your work home with you. Don't take guys, your work they, home. They take their work home with them. Right. There's a guy in my neighbor, a traffic cop, a traffic cop for 20 years, Johnny. Mm -hmm. Can't forget he's a traffic cop. Takes his work home with him. It's ridiculous. Makes love to his wife. He tells her to pull over. Yeah, that's, that's bad. That's bad. That's what you mean. It's mean. very bad. No but, as, but as long as you have your health, I suppose health that's amazing. Health is the most important thing. You know that, Johnny. Health. I mean, you mentioned before, but tennis. I mean, you got to cut out tennis for a while. I but do, tennis yeah. is very good. When you get back in shape, play tennis. It's very good. I don't play tennis. I ah. can't play tennis. Why's that? I'm not the tennis type, you know. Yeah. Tennis, you got to be rich and come from Connecticut, you know. <laughs> Hi, we're taking Dad's car. That's Deuce. You know, I can't. It doesn't fit you. It doesn't fit you. <laughs> <laughs> now, but tennis is good. That's how you lose weight. You know, you burn up. Uh, Energy, you lose calories that right. way. All, doctors say all kinds of exercise is great. You burn up uh, energy, you lose calories. I mean, in fact, doctors say when a man likes, makes love to a woman, he burns up energy, he loses 150 calories. I made love to a girl once, I lost even more. I lost 150 calories, my watch and my wife. <laughs> But you gotta eat the right food. Right fish. food, fish is fish. very good. Fish. Fish is fish. important. Seafood. Brain seafood. Brain food. Johnny. Yeah, seafood. Brain very good. I know me. I love seafood. Uh -huh. I don't like seafood restaurants. Oh really? They're no originality. They all yeah. got the same sign, you know. The fish you eat today slept last night in some bay. You know? I'll tell you, when I order fish, I'm only interested in how it's prepared. Mm -hmm. I don't care where the fish slept, if it slept, who it slept with. It makes no difference. <laughs> in fact, I think a fish will taste much better if it was bad morally. That's how I feel. About it. <laughs> Any more fish is probably better. Fish is very yeah, good, yeah, though. Yeah, I don't yeah. like classy restaurants. Those classy seafood restaurants. Uh -huh. I mean, you order lobster before they cook it. Why did I have to show it to you for? <laughs> and once I was out with a girl, and I was trying to impress her. I like this girl, too, John. Yeah. I took her to a nice place and a few drinks. We were She was beautiful. Right. You know? Trying to impress the girl. It was nice, romantic. It was gorgeous. And the waiter came over, you know? Are these two OK? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the lobster came. I was really finished. I was trying to impress the girl how manly I was. You know, I sat in a manly position. I looked at her very manly. Right. And then the waiter put a bib on me. <laughs> I don't like classy restaurants. You don't like classy restaurants. I like to eat home. Home. Home, I don't have to worry about a tie and a jacket, nothing. You know, you want something else, no big production with waiters. You open a refrigerator, I see what's around. Right. Although I got a refrigerator at home, it's, I can't figure it's very deceiving. Ah. My refrigerator, it's always full, there's nothing to eat. <laughs> we got things in our refrigerator like uh, a half a bottle of flat soda. A cup with a broken egg in it. <laughs> this broken egg has been laying there for four months, just waiting for someone to scramble. <laughs> we have one bottle of ketchup that we use. Then we have another bottle of ketchup that's almost empty. It's been for a year and a half. <laughs> and there's one thing more in our refrigerator. A big pot takes up a whole shelf. And the only thing that's in this big pot is a half of boiled potato. Just sit there. And with my wife, you know, since I'm mad, after every meal, I hear the same thing. Finish it, I'm only going to throw it out. <laughs> Somehow I get the feeling she only gives me to eat what she's going to throw out. <laughs> What's really annoying with my wife, the way she serves a meal. Serves Ooh, badly? Her. No. I mean, you put down a steak. How do you forget the plate? <laughs> so, guys, that was Rodney Dangerfield at his finest and at his best. Uh, I really loved the whole set and... Uh, Whenever he came on Johnny Carson, he was fantastic. I've seen many videos with Johnny Carson and he has always been fantastic. And Johnny Carson, you can see Johnny Carson loves him. Yeah, Rodney Dangerfield really had a very tough childhood. And that's what skipped his comedy. And that's what, uh, that's what you can see in his comedy. It's real. Loved this set, loved this comedy, loved, loved his kind of delivery. This 10 minute of comedy had everything of Rod Rodney Dangerfield. He touched upon doctor, he touched upon his childhood, he touched upon how he was lonely and uh, many other things about his wife, his children. You, can, you saw this, you saw everything in this one short video and that's kind of a template of Rodney Dangerfield comedy. And this is what made him famous, this is what made him one of the, this is what made him the greatest comedian, one of the greatest comedian of all time. This clip might have been from a time many many of us were not even born. So 
to kind of relate till now. I am from India and some am from US maybe few decades back and still we can relate to that comedy and to relate with everything and to laugh and to bring happiness after this much time. This is like amazing and uh, one can say that this is timeless comedy. This is never going to be out of fashion. This is never going to be like outdated. This is always this is going to be always a standard of comedy and uh, even people watching 100 years or 200 years or 1000 years from now will find this funny and they will remember Ronnie Dangerfield as the greatest comedian, one of the greatest comedian of all time. So on this note, I want to close this video. Thank you for watching and hope you like this video and uh, I have put original video link in my description so please go and subscribe that also and subscribe my channel also thank you for watching let's see uh, see you in next video with another comedian another great video thank you